Hey there students, uh, welcome to the Archipelacer Elementary Algebra um, Sample Questions Review. Um, to get a copy of this document, you can just go to the www.collegeboard.com website. They have um, these questions and a lot of uh, support materials for you to get ready for the test, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at question one. It says, if A represents the number of apples purchased at 15 cents, and B represents the number of bananas purchased at 10 cents, which of the following represents the total value of purchases in cents? So you just need to remember the equation for uh, for um, total price. Uh, so basically the total total price, let me given by, total price is normally given by the um, quantity multiplied by the unit price, okay? So uh, let's look at um, we have two items here. Apples. Let's look at apples, for example. For apples, the total for apples is going to be um, the the quantity, how many apples were bought, um, a number of apples were bought, and that will be multiplied by the unit price, which, price, which is 15. Okay? And this can be written as 15a. You normally write a number before um, the variable. Okay? So that goes for apples, and then we have bananas. So for bananas, um, the quantity is B multiplied by the unit price for bananas, which is 10 cents each. All right, so this is the total price for bananas and that we can write as 10B. Okay, so what is it? We asked for the total value of purchases, that banana plus apple. So total purchase, uh, total uh, purchases is simply the sum of these two quantities right here, which is going to be 15A plus 10B, okay? And that's option letter D. All right, let's move on to question two. What is the square root of 2 times the square root of 15? And um, this involves the use of a property of radicals known as a product property. So if you have root A times root B, these terms under the square root are known as the radicands, okay? Anytime you're multiplying radicals of this nature, um, all you have to do is multiply the, the radicand, so it's A times B, which can be written as root AB, okay? So in this case, uh, what we're dealing with right here, we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 15. The radicands are 2 and 15. So the product is simply going to be the square root of 2 times 15, okay? And then that becomes the square root of 30. So our final answer is option B. I'm sorry, <laughs> the answer is option C. Okay, moving along to question um, number three. It says, what is the value of the expression 2x squared plus 3xy minus 4y squared when x is 2 and y equals negative 4? So what we're going to do here is substitute these values um, into this expression. So we have 2x squared plus 3xy minus 4y squared. So x is 2, y is negative 4. Um, what does that mean? It means anywhere we see x, we replace it with 2, and anywhere we see y, we replace it with negative 4. Anytime you're substituting expressions into, uh, substituting values into an expression, always make use of parentheses, okay? So we're going to write 2 parentheses, 2 squared plus 3 times 2 for x and negative 4 for y minus 4 times y square is negative 4 square. Okay? The reason why it's always good to use parentheses is because it uh, prevents you from making mistakes associated with signs. All right? So in this case, we have two, uh, we're going to use the order of operations to simplify this. So we're going to do um, exponents first and then we'll multiply and then add or subtract. Okay? So remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We don't have parentheses here, we just do an exponents now. All right, so let's evaluate the exponent. So in this term right here, we're going to square the 2. So 2 squared is 2 times 4 plus. Now, when you're multiplying multiple terms, you have to do it 2 at a time, okay? So 2 times negative 4 is going to be times uh, negative 8, okay? And then we have that. And then be careful here. Anytime you square a negative, it's a positive, okay? There's a trick for remembering how to multiply signs. Anytime the signs are the same, you always have a plus. If the signs are different, you have a minus, okay? 
So you can also use a P sign approach, minus minus plus. And there goes your P sign. Doesn't look too good. Well, what this basically tells you is that when you're multiplying two minuses, you get a plus. If you multiply a minus and a plus, you get a minus. If you multiply a minus and a plus, you get a, uh, a minus, okay? So there you have it. Let me let me make a nicer piece sign for you, because uh, I'm going to be making uh, multiple references uh, to to this uh, to this uh, mnemonic device. Okay, so just just keep track of the uh, nature of the signs. As long as the signs are different, the product of the signs will always be minus, and if the signs are the same, it's going to be plus. Okay, so minus times minus is plus. So it can go this times this is that, that times that is that, that times that is that. Okay, or well, minus times minus is plus, plus times plus is plus, and minus times plus is minus, and plus times minus is minus. All right, so any of these uh, tools that help you remember is good. So this is my, minus 4 squared. So minus 4 squared is minus 4 times minus 4, which is going to be positive. So we're going to have positive 16 right here. Okay. All right, moving along, uh, so uh, multiplying, we're still in the multiply portion of, please excuse my dear Sally, 2 times 4 is 8, positive 3 times negative 8, the sign of the difference is going to be a minus, remember, minus times plus is a minus, right, so minus 24, and then minus 4 times 16 is minus 64, all right, now when we add and subtracting, uh, we can do it, it doesn't really matter the order, but we can do two at a time, it's easier to, let me combine uh, these two together first, so we have 8, Minus 24 minus 64 is minus 88. And then now we add in and subtract in if the signs are different, you add and keep the sign of the bigger one. Okay, so in this case we have a positive and a negative. So we subtract and keep the sign of the bigger, which is minus, so it's going to be negative 80. Alright? So your answer here is option letter A. Alright, let's move on to question four. It says in the figure below. Both circles have the same center and the radius. And the radius of the larger circle is r. Uh, if the radius of the smaller circle is three units less than r, which of the following represents the area of the shaded region? Okay. So um, we know the formula for area of a circle is pi times r squared. Okay. In this case, area of the shaded is going to be the area of the larger um, minus the area of the smaller, okay? So if we take the, the smaller one out of the larger one, we'll be, we're going to be left with the shaded region, all right? So let's resolve what the or radius, the radii are first um, before we generate our formula, okay? Because the formula is, the area is dependent mainly on the radius, okay? So what is the radius? of the larger circle. What is it? Radius of the larger circle. The radius of the, of the larger circle, we're told, is r. So it's big R. Okay? All right, what is the radius of the smaller circle? The radius of the smaller circle is 3 less. What does 3 less mean? 3 less basically means you're subtracting 3 from the original. So it's 3 less than r. In mathematical form is written as r minus 3. Okay? So that's the radius of a smaller circle. Alright, so now we have enough information to generate the formula for the area of the shaded region. So the area of the shaded is going to be the area of the larger, which is pi times the radius of the larger. The radius of the larger is big R, so it's big R square, minus the area of the smaller, which is pi R square, pi times the radius of the smaller is quantity r minus 3, so quantity r minus 3 square, okay? Remember, we have to square the radius for, for to get the area, okay? So there goes the area of the shaded region, and that's basically it. So this is consistent with option letter D, all right? So there you have it. Okay, let's move on to question 5. Uh, um, this, this is assessment of our knowledge of the distributive property. So we have 3x minus 2y squared. So this basically means that we're multiplying this quantity by itself twice, okay? So we have 3x minus 2y multiplied by 
x minus 2y. So we can follow this out or double distribute. Um, so we're going to go first, outer, inner, and then last. Okay? All right, we'll do first 3x times 3x is going to be uh, 9x squared. First outer is going to be negative 6xy. Inner is going to be negative 6xy also. And then last, minus times minus is a plus. 2y times 2y is 4y squared. Okay? All right. And then when we combine it, notice how I lined up the like terms for easy combination. When we combine it, we're going to have... 9x squared, when the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign, minus 12xy plus 4y squared. Okay? And the way it's written here, the squares are placed next to each other. So let's move this square over here. So we have 9x squared plus 4y squared minus 12xy. Uh, and our final answer is option letter D. All right, let's move on to the next one. Question six, it says if x is greater than two, then what is x squared minus x minus six over x squared minus four? So the question is, is this reducible? Can I factor out something from these two polynomials? Well, in order to be able to see if they have a common factor, I have to um, factor them completely first, express them as a product of your factors, okay? So let's factor them piece by piece, no, uh, one at a time, and then we see if anything can go, okay? So let's start with the numerator. So the numerator is x squared minus x minus 6. This is a quadratic trinomial, so I'm going to factor this using the x game, okay, or the AC method. So let's set up the x. AC goes on the top, and B goes on the bottom, okay? So AC is negative 6, and B is negative 1. Uh, what two numbers multiply to give you this and add to give you that? We can use 3 and 2. Um, since we need the sum to be negative, the bigger number has to be negative, okay? So the factored form of this expression is x minus 3 times x plus 2, okay? So that goes for the numerator. So the problem becomes x minus 3. Um, x minus 3 times x plus 2, okay? Now, how about the denominator? How do we factor that? Uh, this is known as a difference of squares because we have a square minus a square. X squared is a square, 4 is a square. And we're going to use the difference of squares formula, a squared minus b squared. In order to factor it, uh, you just read the first and the last. And you add and subtract the square roots. So you get a plus b times a minus b. Okay? So I'm going to apply this approach here because I have a square and a square. This is called the difference of square. It's difference of squares. So I'm going to read the first term and then the last. And then I'm going to add and subtract the square roots, okay? So the factored form is going to be x minus 2 or x plus 2 times x minus 2. It doesn't really matter. All right, so that's the factored form of the denominator. So x plus 2 times x minus 2. And voila, we can see that they actually have a factor in common, namely x plus 2, that is the numerator and the denominator. So these two can divide out to 1. And our final answer is going to be x minus 3 over x minus 2. And uh, the answer is option letter B. Okay? All right, let's move on to question number seven. All right, so question seven, we're going to do four minus negative six over negative five. So what is negative times negative? You remember what negative times negative is? Uh, let's do our peace sign again, just for our reinforcement. Um, remember, our peace sign tells us that um, anytime we have different signs being multiplied together. We have a plus, I mean a minus, and if we're multiplying the same sign, we have a plus, okay? So remember, minus, minus, and a plus. Anytime you're multiplying different, the same sign, so minus times minus is a plus, and if the signs are different, it's going to be uh, a minus, all right? So we have minus and a minus here, so this is obviously going to be a plus. Another way to remember it is slash and dash. When you're multiplying like this, you just slash and dash like that, okay? So this is going to be 4 plus 6 over negative 5 is going to be 10 over negative 5 
10 over negative 5 is negative 2. So the answer to, for number 7 is D. Alright, let's move on to question uh, 8. This is uh, testing our knowledge of uh, using the properties of algebra to solve an equation. Uh, so we have 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 equals negative 5. So uh, we need to isolate x, but before we do that, we need to get rid of the parentheses. So we need to distribute this number to both terms in the parentheses. Notice this number goes with a sign, okay? So we have to distribute with its sign. All right, so bring down the 2x. Negative 3 times positive x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times positive 4, remember, minus times the plus is minus because the signs are different. So minus 12 equals negative 5. We can combine these two terms, uh, the like terms, um, same degree. So the signs are different, so we, keep the, we subtract and keep the sign of the bigger one. So we're going to have negative x minus 12 equals negative 5. Now to isolate x, we're going to add 12 to both sides. And that yields negative x equals uh, positive 7. Final step to get x isolated, we'll divide both sides by negative 1. And we'll have x equals negative 7. So our final answer for number 8 is option B. All right, moving right along, um, question 9. Um, we have negative 3 times 5 minus 6 minus 4 times 2 minus 3. All right, using order of operations to simplify this arithmetic expression, we need to deal with the parentheses first, all right? So 5 minus 6, um, signs are different. You subtract and keep the sign of the bigger one. So this would be negative 1. And then minus 4 times 2 minus 3 is negative 1 because the bigger one is negative and the signs are different. So you subtract and keep the sign of the bigger. Minus 3 times minus 1. Remember, when the signs are the same way you're multiplying, they become plus. So you can slash and dash. This becomes positive 3. Minus 4 times minus 1 becomes positive also, so this becomes plus 4, okay? So slash and dash, and slash and dash, all right? Or you can use a peace sign. 3 plus 4, 7. Answer to number 9 is B, okay? All right, let's move on to the last question, uh, question number 10, which basically assesses our knowledge of how to solve um, linear inequalities. So we have 2, 20 minus 4 over 5x is greater than or equal to 16. So we want to find an equivalent expression. Equivalent expression, you look at all these uh, alternatives here, how x isolated. So we want to look for, get x isolated and see which expression matches what we get. All right? So we need to move 20 to the other side and get rid of negative 4 over 5, um, step by step. So let's get rid of the 20 first. So this is positive. We subtract 20 from both sides. And that gives us uh, negative 4 over 5x is greater than or equal to 16 minus 20 as negative 4. We subtract and keep the sign of the bigger one. So how do I solve this? This looks like a mess to deal with. Uh, how about I divide by negative 4 over 5? How about that? That looks terrible. Is there another way that's easier on the brain to handle to get x by itself? Absolutely. Instead of dividing by fractions, which makes it a mess and could lead to a panic attack, we can multiply by the reciprocal, right? So the reciprocal of negative 4 over 5 is negative 5 over 4. Okay? I multiply both sides by reciprocal of the coefficient of x, and that will eliminate this coefficient right here. So negative 5 over 4 on the left, and negative 5 over 4 on the right. All right? So look at what happens here. This x is divided out. Minus times the minus, slash and dash is a plus, and a 4 is divide out. So you're left with x is. Now we have to be really careful. Anytime you divide by negative, you, you must switch to inequality, okay? So this becomes less than or equal to. Uh, 4 goes here, 1, 4 goes here, 1. Minus times the minus is a plus, slash and dash, less than or equal to 5, okay? So the another. A, a trick here is do not forget to switch the inequality. Had I forgotten to switch the inequality, I would have selected B, which is a wrong answer. The correct answer to number 10 is option letter A. Okay? 
So uh, there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel uh, by clicking up here. You can help support the creation of uh, videos such as these and others by commenting or liking this video. Uh, more videos can be found on mapreserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.